Sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's showtime! It's not gonna happen if Daniel McMillan, Pennsylvania native, kept your winning here at Pocono. Third win of the season, and will win the championship. Ryan Benjamin with the last lap pass! And he is going to score the victory in the Minute Maid 300. Sam and Austin, third win of the season! He's gonna get it and only leaves three laps today! Welcome to the NOF SRL. For the first time ever, the New Era Cup Series is in the Music City, Nashville, Tennessee. We're in their suburban of Lebanon, Tennessee, though, today. At the Nashville Super Speedway, the NASCAR Cup Series made a huge announcement a few weeks ago that they'd be coming here in 2021 for the first time. So why not the New Era Cup Series for the first time this year? Originally supposed to be at the Nashville Fairgrounds, some technical difficulties caused with the track itself has forced this race to be moved here to the 1.3 mile concrete trial bowl. Welcome to the Gibson Guitars 500. Seven races until the playoffs begin and it is getting pretty tight on who could get spot number 16. More on that in just a moment. Good evening everyone in Etowa Fasero, ninth in America. I'm Ari Sakala, joined alongside with Matt Tuck. Matt, a few weeks ago, or I should say actually uh, last week, the Body Armor Cup Series was here at National Super Speedway. What racing could we expect here tonight that would be similar? Yeah, obviously, you know, the Body Armor Cup Series is just here uh, Sunday night, actually, for a pretty crazy one that Brandon Nelson stole there, but I would expect, barring it goes into a wreck melee or something, I'd expect probably a lot of the same. Not a lot of wrecking, hopefully. Probably a lot of green flag racing. Interesting. Uh, interesting. Uh, tire strategy probably going to play out. See what sort of strategy play out in this race. But it's a this is an interesting race, and definitely fuel mileage is definitely going to find its way to determine this race here this year. Now we talk about the playoffs. As I said at the top of the broadcast, Seven races until the playoffs. Fifteen spots have been filled, despite the fact that we have had 16 different winners. Jesse Turner, who came home 16th at Indianapolis, could not find his way back into the top 30. He is 10 points back. Nathan Stapleton getting a win in his hometown last week. Now up 29 above the top 30. Marty Johnson, the Daytona 500 winner, could be in some trouble. He is 10 points above. As we look at the top 10, though, Diego Rossello with a 52-point lead. But the battle for 16th is heating up. Mitchell Collins is up 37 on Luke Rainey. But he better hope that someone below him does not get a win today. Everyone above in the top three, they have won this season. So this is a critical race for Mitchell Collins, as well as everyone else who's below the cutoff, like Luke Rainey, Zach Ryan, Stuart Grant, and Benny Watson, and Matt Tuck. Let's give you the starting lineup for the Gibson Guitars 500. On the pole for today's race, you got Jonathan Logan in the 21, Alex Lozano in the 88. Row number two, Ethan Lewis and Zach Ryan, currently 18th in the cutoff. Row number three, Jesse Turner, Tristan Allen. Turner trying to make it into the top 30. Row four, it's point leader, Diego Rossello and Benny Watson. Row five, two-time winner this season. Excuse me, Brian Ferris and Marty Johnson, who needs a good day today. Row number six, a pair of Stuart Haas teammates, Stuart Grant and Zachary Fitzwater. Row 7, Igor Barreto and Mitchell Collins. Row 8, two-time winner this year, Eric Monaco and Casey Nanico. The ninth row, Ryan New, Patrick Smith. Row 10, he's been close to getting a win this season, Steve Morgan and Gatlin Downey. For the rest of the grid we go, Johnny Garner, Eli Bright, CJ Williams, Carter Friesen, Brian Webb, Cody Smart, Luke Rainey, Neil Clifford, Matt Tuck, oh wait, I know that guy, Nathan Stapleton, Ethan Hoffman, Christian Vargas, Edwin Mendez, Colin Dente, Matthew Logan, Tyler Markle, Daniel Voyles, Justin Zydell, the tail end of the field, John Andrews, and Derek Hamill. Let's roll these drivers off. This is a 94 lap race around the Nashville Super Speedway, the 1.333 mile concrete trioval. Cars fired up just about to roll on off. Make sure everyone here is good to go. And they are. Stages today will end at laps 25, 50, and the race at 94. Expect this to be a three-stop strategy on a full tank on 1X, 75 laps. Remember, it's 2X here at this racetrack. So this could be about a two to three pit stop race. Uh, that's what I would expect. 
Matt Tuck, I'm going to ask you, who do you think's got a chance at winning it? I'm going to say here, um, probably watch out for that 93 car. I think fast here today and I find a way to score the victory today. Ethan Lewis, he is a part-timer today. Could definitely spoil what the playoffs could look like by the end of the day today. And we're going to restart the race because Johnny Garner and CJ Williams, did they, blow, they just simultaneously blew up. Have you ever? That's pretty epic. Yeah. Okay, let's restart this. All right, so the wait is longer. So like we were saying, Ethan Lewis is a part-timer, not even racing there for a championship. He's just out here to have fun and get some wins. But remember, like we said, the playoffs could change big time today. 15 drivers at the moment are locked in. It could remain that way. It could be 16 with Jesse Turner if he makes the top 30. If Marty Johnson stays in the top 30, it could be 17 if someone else gets their first win of the season and a driver with a win would be knocked out. It's all going to be a fun one today. Jonathan Logan, Alex Lozano will lead the field to the green. Pace car makes a left-hand turn to pit road. Strap in and hold on tight because it's time to turn it loose and drop the hammer. Ladies and gentlemen at the Nashville Super Speedway, it's showtime! Good start by Logan. Gets the advantage in turn number one. Lozano and Lewis getting him back on the gas a little bit. Slicing and dicing for their runner-up spot. Move the 88. He keeps the runner-up's position. Ryan and Lewis battling for third. Going into turn three. Ryan trying to cut down in front of that 93. But it's not working out. Off of turn four. Lap one of the Gibson Guitars 500. Led by the 21 of Jonathan Logan. 21 looking like he's got a fast car here to start this race, but he's got to be careful. You know, we saw a lot of last Sunday night here for the Body Armor Cup Series. If you miss your mark there in one and two, three and four is over, especially one and two slide high. Not going to take much for somebody to pounce, and there's already a bunch of hungry hounds lined up behind him. Look at Tristan Allen on the middle, trying to get by Ethan Lewis that way and take the fourth spot. I think he's got it there at the strike, and yes, he does. Move him, another part-timer, up to fourth position. Oh, almost cuts down in front of Lewis. They almost made contact. They're going to go door-to-door. -door. Aggressive here early on in the go. be interesting to see here if we see any cautions tonight. We only saw two Sunday night, and obviously one of them was for a driver running out of gas. So this is definitely not a, you have a lot Oh, we got a car coming down pit road. Car oh. coming down pit road. It's Ryan New. Think he's got a flat tire. Let's see what's going on with that 66 machine. We'll keep you focused on the top 10. Jonathan Logan, though, continuing to lead. Long way down pit road for the driver of the 66 starting in the back of the pack. So let's see what the deal is. Looks like something flat on the right side. So we're going to change the tires there. Meanwhile, battle for the lead. Jonathan Logan, Alex Lozano, Logan... He came in 25th in the point. Wants a really good day. Alex Lozano, 18th. They're both going for a win. And the spoiler of the hopes of Mitchell Collins, who's currently the last guy in because of points. Has not won yet this season. And he's come oh so close. Currently in 12th spot. How about the points here as well? Diego Rossello, currently in 8th position. A 52-point gap coming in over this man, Zachary Fitzwater. So this is a this is a big day. It's a critical race in the playoffs here. Here goes Ryan for second. El Lozano, not gonna work. Twenty two, trying to get down to the bottom there, just didn't quite have enough on that eighty eight car, but ninety eight there, just taking him around the outside. Oh, hold on. There. Okay. Wow, what a pass yeah. there by Allen. Great pass by him. Here comes Jesse Turner. This man off to a good start. Oh, he tried to put a big move on Zach Ryan. Coming in, this man, 31st, 10 points below the cutoff. And right now, he is showing why he is a contender for the championship. His adversary in the playoffs, Marty Johnson, is also in that danger zone. 30th, 10 points up on that cutoff. Currently running in 8. So those drivers that are in that bubble, doing a good job earlier on. Early on, they're staying single file. It's a choo-choo train. Nose to tail, the first side-by-side -side battle you have. 
was Casey Nanico and Igor Barreto. That is for 14. A lot of side-by-side -side racing up and down here through this field early on in the going. And Nashville, Turner definitely... Obviously, the 21's leading, but that 43 car, Jesse Turner, seems to have probably one of the best cars here so far. He's definitely shown he has the ability to work both lanes and is definitely making a lot of moves here early on in the going in this race. Seems like as well here early on that the middle line is the way you want to go around... Uh this uh, concrete uh, tri-oval. I think it's probably because, you know, the track is flat. Could that be the case or no? Eh. I mean, we saw here Sunday night, it's not necessary that the track is flat because, I mean, there's a lot of tracks that have, there's not, this isn't a flat track. It's not a high bank track, but it's definitely got a lot of banking, more so like Texas turn one, be a closer comparison. You want to high, you kind of want to diamond it. You want to be more, high to low to high coming out on this track but you know you don't want to hit that apron the apron i would say is the one thing you don't want to hit here because it's not going to be your friend but you know we saw a lot of we saw a lot of sunday night a lot of guys working that bottom lane you know if you sling it in there just a little bit above that yellow line you can get a big run off but the high lane as you see that 88 car of alex lozano work and the high lane is just it's it's not that it's a bad lane it just doesn't quite carry the momentum as well as the low side does. How about Tristan Allen, though, not giving up on that battle for a second with Alex Lozano. They remain wheel-to-wheel -wheel off of turn number two. It's getting pretty good. Now Turner trying to spoil the party here. A three-car battle for the runner-up spot on the track. Right now, though, Jonathan Logan is liking this. I think the, like, the main reason he's been out in front is probably for the high downforce package. Clean air. Is your best friend, especially on these flat like tracks. When we went to Richmond about a month or two ago, that's a flat short track, obviously. And Ryan Benjamin was up front for most of the race, almost got the job done, almost won it, but then had an issue with the car. So Diego Rossello was able to get that clean air and take home the victory. Here's Lozano onto that back bumper of Jonathan Logan. Turner, though, bound with Allen for third position. They stacked the field up a little bit. No, it's there goes Lozano, good. though, to the bottom. There goes Lozano to the bottom. Is he going to make the pass? You got to drive it in deep on that low it. line. No, not yet. Logan powers it. Oh, it's not over yet. Lozano's fighting back down low. Looking at it from the spectator camera and turn through. That's our super slow-mo camera for today. Jonathan Logan, he's got that outside working in well. Here comes Jesse Turner. The Air Force has entered the chat. That I turn and look. Car, he's gonna size him up, make it to the bottom. I oh, he can't quite get it there too. The high line. I wonder if it's just because of the high downforce or not. The high line definitely seems to be a little bit more than we saw Sunday night. The high line to be a little bit, a touch better than it was here Sunday night for the Body Armor Cup Series. Give you a playoff update at the moment with Jonathan Logan currently leading. That would put Mitchell Collins out of the playoffs. Jesse Turner is third. He's definitely in. Marty Johnson, I think he's in, but it's going to depend on where Johnny Gardner is. Johnny Gardner is currently in 34th. This man's got two wins coming in and is currently outside of the top 30. Can you believe that? I can't. Uh, Neil Clifford and Nathan Stapleton, I think they're doing fine for right now. Clifford is in 23rd. Stapleton is in 20th. So they would be in above the top 30 at the moment. Johnny Gardner would be out. So what that would mean is if we can get back to focusing on the two is that um, I believe this would still give us six. This If Jonathan Logan wins, I think this would give us, um, if I'm trying to do my math correctly. Yeah, if Jonathan Logan wins, uh, pretty much Mitchell Collins would be out. So he's got to hope that a guy like Jesse Turner gets win number two this season. And he's up to second. He made a pass on Lozano. He is coming to party. Gonna try and make that bottom side work. Oh, there. oh, and he's got it. Get it. Oh, clear up, clear up, clear up. He's got it. The low line working now. It's coming into play, Matt. And Jesse Turner goes to the race lead. Zach Ryan, go ahead. 
Uh, if he's making turns, making that low lane work. I mean, we saw it. We saw it Sunday night. It takes. It does take a little bit to get these lanes in here at the Nashville Super Speedway. But once you do get the track rubbered up, you have multiple lanes to work with. Definitely, it is one of the more interesting tracks we go to because of that. Logan trying to fight back. That loss for the lead cost him two positions. Here comes Lozano. He wants to take third away. Now Logan running that middle line can defend properly. He could possibly make a move on his Penske affiliated teammate of Zach Ryan. There he goes. Shuts the door on Lozano. This is for a second. Let's see if it works in one. No, Ryan getting the middle line working. Nice move there by Zach Ryan, but Jesse Turner, I think this may possibly be the biggest gap we've had all day long. Just over a half a second over the 22. Now with Turner out in front, that's what the 19 wants to see. Currently ninth at the moment. Like I said, remember Marty Johnson currently in. Jesse Turner obviously in. First guy out would probably be Johnny Garner where he's running in 31st. So he has not even made up some ground. And look at Luke Rainey as well. He came in 37 below. He could possibly lose 17th today to Zach Ryan because he's in second. And it's getting pretty good for the race lead. How about Diego Rossell, the points leader? Currently in fifth spot. Having a good job so far. Definitely extending its points gap over Zachary Fitzwater. Trying again. Take a look at that. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. Nine car is definitely, he's trying to, you know, the nine given that, given that Diego Rossell is the points leader, he doesn't have to do a whole lot here. You know, we're all, we're, are we 20 races now into the season? This is race 20 of the season, yes. Seven races until the playoffs begin, and right now he's pretty good, uh, I think as well, with because he's the points leader and having a good chance at being the regular season champion. Because uh, remember, 15 additional playoff points after... Uh, the regular season ends if you are the regular season champion, and that would give Rossello the most. So he'd have a huge advantage in the playoffs. Yeah, obviously the he doesn't have to do a whole lot here coming in. More so, he just needs to, I guess you could say, maintain. He doesn't necessarily need to, however you would word it, he doesn't need to go out there and try and carry the world world on the back of his shoulders here today. He more just needs to have a nice run here for the next couple of weeks make sure he scores points that's going to be more important here for him necessarily than actually getting wins because that 15 playoff points is going to be worth a ton once this chase starts absolutely zach ryan for a moment was on that back bumper of jesse turner but turner was able to defend properly and now let's see what's happened here that is for fifth on the track lewis he may have scraped the wall actually that was pretty close to getting that outside concrete barrier. And look at that around the outside. Gets by for fifth on Rossello. Two laps to go, by the way, in stage one. And it's Jesse Turner out in front. The 10 bonus points as well for winning this stage would be big as well as a playoff point. I only think he's got five from the Texas win he got a few months ago. So this would give him six. Now on the year, if he can maintain that lead, just over four-tenths of a second over Zach Ryan. For 10th right now, Mitchell Collins has the edge, but he could get Casey Nanico for a night. That's going to be close there. We'll see it in a moment. Out of turn number four, stage one victor is Jesse Turner over Zach Ryan. Third is Jonathan Logan. And it looks like 10th does go to Mitchell Collins. We'll wait for it to update. And it is Mitchell Collins. Let's do a full field rundown at the moment. Caution free all day so far. Jesse Turner in the lead. Zach Ryan second. Jonathan Logan third. Alex Lozano, Ethan Lewis. That's for fourth. Diego Rossello is sixth. Marty Johnson seventh. Casey Nanico eighth. Tristan Allen ninth. Mitchell Collins is tenth. Zachary Fitzwater, 11th. Benny Watson, 12th. Eli Bright, 13th. Stuart Gratton, 14th. Patrick Smith, 15th. Neil Clifford, 16th. Eagle Barreto, 17th. Nathan Stapleton, 18th. Casey Nanico, oh, excuse me, Christian Vargas, 19th. 20th, Brian Ferris. 
21st, Eric Monaco. 22nd, Colin Denton. 23rd, Gatlin Downey. 24th, Carter Friesen. 25th, Justin Zydell. 26th, Derek Hamill. 27th, Tyler Markle. 28th, Steve Morgan. 29th is Cody Smart. 30th is John Andrews. Johnny Garner, 31st. And we are following that closely. Because right now, with two wins, he is out. 32nd, Brian Webb. 33rd, Matt Tuck. Sorry, man. 34th is Luke Rainey. 35th, Ethan Hoffman. 36th, Edwin Mendez. 37th, CJ Williams. 38th, Matthew Logan. 39th, Daniel Boyles. Only car a lap down. Ryan knew he had a vibration earlier. And here we go for the lead. Zach Ryan all over the bumper. Turner's got a rear view mirror full of him. Doesn't even try the inside here. Matt, I think he's just being patient right now. Because, you know, when you think of it as well, we're just under 10 laps away from the first round of uh, pit stops. I think we've lost Matt, but we'll keep you focused on the battle for lead. Here they all come down pit road right now. Turner leading the field on in. Alex Lozano is going to stay out. Same with teammate Diego Rossello. Got to be careful here when you enter pit road. 45 miles an hour is the speed. So then your teammates 1-2 Lozano and Rossello. They're trying to figure something out. Let's focus though on Jesse Turner as he makes his way down pit road. Are the leaders coming in this time though? We'll take a look. Lozano and Rossello, they're going to come in this time. And I think everyone else is coming with. And that is the plan. Four tires and Sunoco fuel for the leaders. And Jesse Turner on the left side. These are pretty slow pit stops here than usual here in Nashville. Um, but Turner will get out without an issue, though. It's the entire field now down pit road. Jonathan Logan comes out second. Johnson third. Remember, this is not a yellow flag situation. So it's still green flag conditions. So the first pit stop happened just at around lap number 29, 30-60. So, Matt, we're looking at a three-stop race. That's going to make this extreme. Well, that's a lot of pit stops. Or 30, 60. Here's where it's going to be interesting. If you get a caution... This is where this all of a sudden becomes interesting because in the event you get a caution, which honestly I do not know if you're going to get that, this track has shown we ran 75 laps Sunday night and had one caution for an actual incident. The other was Christopher Alphabie just stretching the fuel too much. So we've had one caution for incident here now in the past 106 laps of ran at this racetrack here. And obviously, you know, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting um, I don't know if, if you get a caution, you could in theory, make this now a two stop race because if you get a couple caution laps, you have to figure the next pit stop is going to be in the lap 60 or so, yes. which in theory puts you to lap 90. But if you get a yellow run five laps under yellow, stretch it. So it makes this, it makes this extremely interesting. Now this is going to be, yeah. if you get a yellow somebody's going to roll the dice and try and do this on two. But if it stays green, I feel pretty, you know, three stops is probably what's going to happen if this, if in the event this race is green. Perhaps the big winner in all this on pit stops, Marty Johnson. He's made his way up to second position, highest he's been today. Ten points above the cutoff coming in. Those drivers in 30th and 31st coming in, right now they're easily above the top 30. Some other big winners as well, Casey Nanico. He's up to Fifth, I think the biggest loser here. I don't know if there was really any biggest losers, but how about this guy as well? Derek Hamill started at in last position. He's made his way up to 21st. He's having a good race so far today. He's running good. Uh, who else we got? Run? Oh, you know what? I think the biggest loser was probably uh, either Benny Ethan. Watson or Ethan Lewis. Look how far they've plummeted. Ethan Lewis is not, I don't know if he, like you had said earlier in the race, alluded to, I don't know if he got into the wall, but he has, his car is just completely shut off here in the past cut, in the past 20 or so laps. Started third and has just yeah. tanked through the field since then. So I don't know if he had an issue or something or what's going on. Maybe they just, you know, maybe they just had a really good car for five laps. Just decided, didn't want to show up, but tough day for them. Definitely. They've not had 
you know, not had what they're looking for, especially given they are only, he's only running a part-time schedule. He's only here to just try and grab those wins when he can. So it's kind of tough for him when he's out here and doesn't get the results they're looking for. You got Johnny Garner currently right in 26 spots. So he's improved a few points um, after where he has been. But currently right now, because of the 27 points he's got and how Marty Johnson and Jesse Turner are doing, still not where he wants to be at the moment. He's got to do some fighting at the moment. Um, Zachary Fitzwater all the way back to 31st spot. I don't know what happened on pit stops for him, but a tough break for that guy. John Andrews as well. He just made a pit stop. I think he had an, it's an unscheduled one. Lap traffic, though, is ahead for Jesse Turner, and that's Ryan New in the 66. Now, New, he doesn't have any damage to the race car. Um, so keep in mind that. But do you think that lap traffic could be an issue with Jesse Turner? Because when we go back to Texas, that almost was an issue for Jesse Turner. Almost cost him the race to Ryan Benjamin, if I recall correctly. It's gonna be interesting. Obviously, we didn't have it. We didn't have that issue Sunday night, but we also didn't quite run enough laps. I guess you could say. It's gonna be interesting. This is definitely. It's not like some tracks where lap traffic is an actual pain to get through. But if you know, if he can at least, if he can get these first, I guess it's only one immediately. If he can get a car or two, you know, if he can clear by him quickly, it won't be a problem. But he's kind of struggling here, so. I'm going to have to watch this to see if the 12 and the 21 are able to pull back in on him. He actually gained time, though, despite having to deal with that lap traffic, to Marty Johnson from 1.1 to 1.24. So gained a tenth and a half there. But it's a three-car battle for second. That's probably the reason why Turner gained some time there, Marty. Johnson, Jonathan Logan, Diego Rossello. We haven't gone on board yet with any drivers today. Let's go from the visor camera, Diego Rossello. Show you what the speed's looking like. Look how fast that is in these cup cars. Just about 187 going to turn one on that bumper of jump. Looks like he's going to put the chrome horn on him, but he's not. Yeah, we were on about the same speed Sunday night, too. Obviously, here at night races, you know, this is a fast, this is not a slow track. We'll have guys sling it around here at pretty high speed definitely makes this you know, overall I mean I would say this is definitely one of the more fun tracks that we go to on the schedule a lot of stuff always happen here but it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out especially if we go oh Johnson hit. Johnson blew up this could cause a wreck huge stack up here oh Ryan just gained by with all the issues the field accordions Allen with damage oh my goodness how does the field blast by unbelievable and this could oh, be a yellow! Oh, oh! oh! My goodness! Betty Watson's in a Zachary Fitzwater! Oh my. I've never seen that before! Yellow have flag is ever. out! Have you ever? Huge situation to the top 30 in points. Marty Johnson running in second spot blows up the field accordions back. At first, I don't know how everyone missed him, but then Benny Watson, I think, slipped in the oil, and you hate to see that happen. Zachary Fitzwater, second in points. About seven cars involved. Just about halfway through, and we get our first yellow of the race, and everyone's coming down pit road. So what are you thinking here, Matt? This, could de this is definitely going to change the strategy up for right mm -hmm. now, because it's... At the moment, if we go green in the end, it wouldn't really be a fuel mileage race. Just probably two well, more stops. This is the second stop of the day for these drivers, so yeah, go ahead. What lap is it right now? We are on lap 43. So you essentially just threw the, any fuel race out the window because in theory, even if there's another, well, obviously there could be another yellow, but given that this yellow was caused due to absurd circumstances, I would say at this point, it, including this, it's a two-stop race and pit again about lap 70, lap 75, and you're good to go to the end. I think at this point, that caution probably... Oh, Lozano edges Turner! Lozano got Turner. No, Mendez got him. Mendez, I think, did two tires. Oh, a lot of strategy being played here. Cody Smart gained a lot of spots. Oh, man, oh, man. This is definitely going to change everything. So I think Edwin Mendez is going to line up as the race leader. Oh, man. Let's see what happened in the first yellow here in Nashville. Big implications. 
So here's Johnson in turn number one. Engine just blows up. Engine just blows up. And the field has to accordion. Stacks on up. Logan gets by. But look at everyone else getting by. Lozano makes contact with Rossello. They bump and get together. But look at everyone else. On the outside. On the inside. Johnson's in the middle. Stuck in the hole. Or the sucker hole. In the mud. With nowhere to go. Everyone gets by clean. Collins is affected by it. Rossello affected by it. So big implications for Collins. But this is where it changes. Johnson stays in the middle. And unfortunately, Benny Watson somersaults him into the air. Oh my heavens. Stuart Gratton getting way loose. He saves it. Brian Webb as well. Daniel Voiles, holy cow, we gotta see this in real time. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple for this part. The 12 car just blows up, and then obviously everybody doing their absolute best to avoid him and I not wreck, have... but then I, I don't understand what the 12 Marty Johnson is doing here because he just suicides into the field, and I don't Benny Watson is not going to be a happy man after the two these past two weeks. Two, yeah, I can last two, yeah. two weeks. That is two weeks in a row. He's basically been screwed out of a race, and it was nothing he could do about it. Just wrong place at the wrong time, and bad luck strikes again for the 38 machine here. There will be hysterics in the NOFSRO Discord after this race. I will guarantee you that. Let's look at some onboards here. Here's Zachary Fitzwater. Came in second in points, 52 back. Not what he wants. Wanted to get his, wanted to close in. Look at that nine car up in the air. Nowhere to go pretty much. That's a huge, huge hit there. Yeah, to both Fitzwater and Voiles. Man. Let's go from the Oscar. Here's the Oscar Mayer on board with Brian Webb. Look at that 12. Up in the air it goes. And yeah, look at that. Brian Ferris was on his outside, so Webb was just trying to squeeze in there between the middle and just clip Benny Watson. First yellow out here in Nashville. We get ready for the restart, and it should be a good one. So we get back to ready for the restart. Uh, one quick correction we do want to make. Edwin Mendez is not the race leader. He's the last car a lap down so I don't know what the issue was going on there with the 11 but we reset the field for the first time today Alex Lozano in the lead Jesse Turner second Jonathan Logan third Zach Ryan fourth Christian Vargas fifth Justin Zidel sixth Eli Bright seventh Casey Nanico eighth Nathan Stapleton ninth Tyler Marcos tenth this top ten completely different after what happened with the yellow for after Marty Johnson blew up chaos on the back straightaway when Benny Watson completely smacked the rear end of Johnson's race car and Zachary Fitzwater, Daniel Voiles, Brian Webb, etc. collected in the process. Get ready to go back to green. There'll be five laps to go in stage two. Lozano lead. Mendez hoping for an immediate caution to get back on the lead lap. And you can say it's the same as well with Cody Smart and John Andrews. Let's see how this works. Andrews three wide for the runner-up spot. Not for a hey, second, though. Turner's in second. Go it. ahead. Look at that. Is He's that... trying to make a bold... No, John Andrews is the first car currently a lap down. Now he's back on the lap. Here goes Turner cutting down low for the lead. But it doesn't work. Four to go in stage two. Here comes Jonathan Logan. He's looking for second. He's looking for the lead. What a move by Jonathan Logan trying to put a double overtake over Lozano and Turner and he goes to the point for now. Here comes Zach Ryan as well in that 22 machine. Tyler Marco in the mix up. Three wide for the top spot. Lozano goes wide. Oh man. This is some fun racing. Turner leads up the middle. See these, these lap cars always find a way to it's always funny how lap cars find a way to mess at the race here, but these guys have to be careful too, because obviously we're coming to the end of the stage here in just a few laps. Oof. Mendez really slowed down the back straightaway, and that cost Jesse the lead. Logan goes back to the point. Oh, Turner not giving up. Go ahead. Yeah, you got the stage break. Or stage break. 
stage end coming up here soon. You want to be careful because you don't want to you don't want to throw away all of what you earn throughout the race. Obviously, stage points are important, but it's also important though to keep your track position though for that last stage as we get as these guys are definitely though they are fighting it all out Man, here. You know, I don't think Mendes has any straightaway speed. Turner is going to be furious with that 11 car big time. And it's, again, once again, not really what Mitchell Collins wants. Because Jonathan Logan, the pole sitter, in the race lead. And that could take Mitchell Collins out of the playoffs for right now. Final lap in stage two. Andrew gets that car back on the lead lap, but it's not over yet. Here comes Zach Ryan. He could try and power around the outside. He's up to the quarter panel. This could be for the stage two victory. And it's not going to work. Jonathan Logan takes home stage two. And I think that is his first stage win of the season. As the field comes powering across the start finish line. Let's do a full field rundown for you while we're at it. Jonathan Logan, the leader. Zach Ryan, second. Colin Dutton in the third spot. He's been quiet all day. I'm looking for second. Tyler Markle, fourth. Neil Clifford, it's fifth. Igor Barreto was 6th. He's back to 7th, losing to Casey Nanical. Derek Hamill is 8th. Carter Friesen is ninth. But actually, let's focus back on for the race lead. Here comes Denton. Oh, man. What a move by Denton. And the 34 goes to 2nd. But Zach Ryan actually put the lead away. Took the lead away from Denton that previous lap. That 34 car, his teammate just plowed himself out of, well, inadvertently plowed himself out of the race a few laps ago, but this 34 car is absolutely carrying the banner here for his team, and he's trying to get the he's lead He's got back. the outside. Yeah, but he's got the outside, but he's got that 17 stuck in his way. Unless he splits the middle, I don't think he's going to, but he's getting a little bit of a run. He's shoving that 17. He wants that lead. Colin Denton, move him. He leads the charge at Nashville. John Andrews, remember, he's not the leader. Currently, the last car one on the lead lap at the moment. And he's got the fastest car on track, too. 29-462. And now Dutton goes to the race lead at Nashville Super Speedway. This is getting good now. He, oh, he cleared Andrews. Powered it by. Goodbye, Zach Ryan. Now the battle for second between Logan and Ryan. That Colin, 21, go, ahead. go ahead. Oh, that 20, I mean, that 21 car was fast when he had clean air, but ever since he got shuffled out of the lead, it just feels like he hasn't quite had enough speed to be able to get back in front. His car definitely does not seem to like driving in traffic here. Absolutely. Still trying to get second on his teammate, Zach Ryan. Let's keep going through the field. We said Jesse Turner was in 10th. 11th is Matthew Logan, 12th Mitchell, Brian Ferris now, 13th Mitchell Collins, 14th Eric Monaco, 15th Christian Vargas, 16th Tristan Allen, 17th Gatlin Downey, 18th Luke Rainey, 19th Patrick Smith, 20th is Nathan Stapleton, 21st Justin Zydell, 22nd Johnny Garner, 23rd Matt Tuck, 24th Eli Bright, 25th Ethan Hoffman, 26th Diego Rossello, 27th Steve Morgan, 28th Ethan Lewis, 29th CJ Williams, 30th, Alex Lozano. 31st, last car on the lead lap is Stuart Gretton. Four cars are a lap down. Andrews, New, Mendez, and Smart. Five cars out of the race. Fitzwater, Johnson, Watson, Boyles, and Webb. Tyler Markle up to third spot. Jonathan Logan in second. And what a gap that is. One second. The lead, Colin Denton is. The man that has the most wins in the New Era Cup Series as well. Last time he won was last season at the Charlotte Roval. The first time we went to the Roval. Can he win the first time at Nashville? Well, he's 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 checked out. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting because if we don't get a caution, I mean, we're only ten laps out from pits. I mean, this may this may play into his favor because we're only about ten to fifteen laps out from pits, and like we said earlier, realistically, this is going to be it for the pits. Yeah, absolutely. That would be would be their final stop of the day. So you gotta be mistake free here if you're Colin Denton's 34 crew. And again, we're gonna reiterate it. It's not what Mitchell Collins wants because a win would put him in, and out would be 
Collins. Marty Johnson as well. You look at the 19 team. You can find, or the 12 team, 37th. They're out of the race. So that's uh, big circumstances there. If I'm looking at the rest of this correctly, Johnny Garner would now be in because he's currently running in 23rd spot. Let's find him. There he is. Jesse Turner currently running in 8th position. So Garner would be in. Johnson would be out. And Mitchell Collins would be out. That's the battle for second spot. Tyler Marco and Jonathan Logan. Zach Ryan and Neil Clifford duking at it as well for fourth. Didn't that 53 car just win a race a few weeks ago? Pocono. That was and that was an insane finish at the end because we 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 were about to hand that race off to Steve Morgan. Uh to gain the win, but then he got bumped out of the way, making a mistake and entering turn two. Ethan Hoffman got the lead. Then Neil Clifford got by, and Neil Clifford won the dang thing, and it put him as well inside the top 30. So he's currently running in fourth spot. Carter Friesen has been quiet as well today. Currently sixth. Jesse Turner trying to fight his way back up in seventh. And Igor Barreto in that 77. I think that car's got damage on the front end. It does, but it's still running inside that top 10. So a lot of good durability at the uh, Spire Motorsports camp. Still looking at the chase for second spot. Tyler Marco trying to get that inside working on Jonathan Logan. When Logan has a car to the inside of him, doesn't seem like the middle line wants to work. Well, I just don't think his car works battling other people. We saw early his car works great when it's just him out in front. But I don't think he has a car that's good enough to actually compete with other people if he has to race them and that 34 car colin denton's got to be loving what he's seeing look at the gap how these guys race i mean he's up to three seconds yeah of a gap he gets heading into the pits that is going to be huge for him. biggest lead of the day that does not have to do with pit stops one but i think he may have fresher tires than these guys i'm not too sure but whatever that team had just done denton's car it was perfect 30 laps to go, or I should say 31 now, at the Nashville Super Speed with the first trip here for the New Era Cup Series. If you have just joined us into the premiere, it was, it's been a crazy race so far. Jesse Turner had led early on in the race. Then he lost the lead because of pit stops under a yellow flag that came out when Marty Johnson, remember him and, and Turner, both in that danger zone. Turner outside the top 30, Johnson in the top 30. Had to have a really good day, critical day, because 15 drivers were in the playoffs coming in. Johnson blew up in turns one and two, and then a big wreck happened when Benny Rotson rammed him in the rear end. And now Johnson currently outside of the top 30. Mitchell Collins is the first guy without points. He held the last spot coming in, and if we can find him, he has actually fallen back to 18th spot. He does not like seeing Colin Denton in the lead. In fact... The guy he wants to see leading right now, either Tyler Marco, Neil Clifford, or Carter Friesen, or even Jesse Turner. Turner is actually coming closer to that Oklahoma land rush. But it all is going to come down, though, to most likely coming down to pit stops. But can anyone catch Colin Denton, though? They're probably going to need a caution, though, in the final laps. The race three wide for second. Hold on. Jonathan Logan on the extreme outside. That's, That's Ryan. not where I want to be. That's not where you want to be if you're that 21 car because he's, like we were saying earlier, he's shown he can't fight with these guys in traffic as well as some of these other cars can. Not, well, not a place where I'd want to be, trapped upside on the outside. Absolutely, but he's still hanging on to second position. Zach Ryan trying to get there. Now Clifford, draft pushing him. Jonathan on that outside to take second. Clifford looking for third. Let's this Carter Friesen have an on, but he does. Let's take you on board with that 37. Almost punted that 22 out of the way. So that got a little bit dicey. They're hanging on though. So 
Now they get it back down to just about single file racing. Should be expecting pit stops here shortly. Last time these drivers all came in was lap 40 for the caution flag. And this should be their last stop of the race. Currently working on the nicest lap of them all, 69. Here comes Tyler Marco on the outside of Carter Friesen for fifth. Where are we at? Going to assume, because we're at, yeah, 69 laps, given that they went 30 on the first run. I would say once they do come down in pit, that's going to be it for them. Yeah, this should be the last stop of the race for these drivers. Remember, it's about a 38 and a half full fuel run. So a 30 lap window we had on the first set of stops. Zach Ryan outside on Neil Clifford for third on track. Fell back to fourth. Now Clifford trying the inside. Now we're on lap 70. Does Colin Denton come in or does he go under the lap? When we went to the Charlotte Rover the last time he won, went it by a pit stop. Went extra laps and won the race. And just held on. And I think he beat, uh, i trying to think who was driving the 66, Alex Lander last season. And that was a part-time team as well. Carter Friesen looking for third. No, Jonathan Logan trying to power by on the outside for second on Clifford. And he's got that. How about the fours right now? Curly, one, two, three. Those Mustangs, unless you tell, count Jonathan Logan's, that's a G Shelby GT, has done really well. Now lap traffic ahead is the Alex Lozano coming down. He's the first guy to lead the charge down pit road. And nobody else goes with him. That's interesting. interesting. Yeah, definitely interesting. Uh, Denton, though, dealing with lap traffic. That's Cody Smart. But I have a feeling this lap would be the time for Colin Denton to come in. Well, you're going to want to pit now because Lozano, if he... The, the advantage to pit him by yourself is you come out by yourself, which means you can turn as blinding laps as fast, however fast you can get that car to go is how fast you can turn. And there we go. So, Looks like I've, all, the, all the leaders, except for Denticate, look at that. That's the I-90. It's a traffic jam there as they all come down for their final stops of the day. Four tires and Sunoco fuel. Meanwhile, Colin Denton gets by Cody Smart without an issue but may have to deal with Alex Lozano, or does Denton say, you know what, I'm coming in. He's coming in. Now, Jesse Turner, what does he do? He comes in, Igor Barreto, Eric Monocle, Mitchell Collins. Oh, I thought he was going to stay out for a moment. Took him a while to under pit road. God, oh, he hit the commandment cone. I don't know, it's going to be close to being an illegal entry. I don't know. We'll have to see from race control what the call is there. But everyone coming out. Now these guys are going to have the horsepower advantage. Oh, that 53 is gunning for it. Yeah, he wants it. He's unofficially, he's got the provisional second spot for right now. Let's find uh, Colin Denton in the 34. I think we passed him. There he is. He's exiting right now at the moment. That's a long time to wait if you are Colin Denton. Where's Clifford? There he is. He's just exiting turn for... I think Denton will keep the lead, but the lead will go down a little bit. And remember, Denton's going to have the fresher tires. Oh, there's Denton. There's Denton. This is for the lead. Well, excuse me. That's John Andrews. Denton just came out. Clifford in second. Logan third. Jesse Turner, a good stop for him. He's back in fourth. Best, the first side-by-side -side action is Eagle Barreto and Carter Friesen. Friesen was probably the biggest loser there on pit stops. Brian Ferris gained a bunch. I think this would put him in sixth. Let's see if I'm trying to find anyone else that may have lost a bunch of spots during that time. And another guy down pit road for another stop. Let's see who that was. That was Cody Smart in the 10. So there's Colin Dent, an easier race leader, about to put Mendez uh, two laps down now. We'll look again. It was just about six seconds at the line. Clifford currently second. That's not for third because John Andrews is currently a lap down. That's the battle for fourth on track between Zach Ryan and Brian Ferris. Thirty-one cars remaining on the lead lap at the moment. And that's the best battle on track. So the gap is... Oh, that's five seconds. That's six seconds. This gap could be seven seconds here. 
barring lap traffic or a yellow, I don't. I didn't got the bag barring lap traffic or yellow. Yeah, yellow's gonna have to come out, or else it looks like this is Col this is Colin Denton's race to lose. Unless he blows up, and they go the field goes by Cody Smart. Remember he had, he had damage from the first yellow, the only yellow of the race, we should say. Freezing Turner Ryan, that's for fifth. Ryan and Ferris both got on the brakes later, and look at the gap. That's like two car lengths Ryan put up on the 37 there. Big gap, that 34 car, you gotta give him his pit crew credit because he came in with about a two and a half, three second lead, I believe, and he more than doubled that in one pit cycle. So you have to give that yeah. team a lot of credit because they were able to blow this race wide open with just one solid pit there. They're about gaining a half second per lap. Over That's the battle for second, by the way. That's why it was a half second gain. Because of the momentum these two drivers lost. Jonathan Logan takes it away from Neil Clifford. He's been right near the front all day long. Starting on pole by the early stages of the race until Turner got by him. Obviously... This now makes it the longest green flag run we've had today. 40 laps was the starting green flag run we had. But yeah, like you said, Matt, a yellow would definitely change everything. That's probably going to be the must. This is for ninth on track. Uh, Tyler Marco, Derek Hamill, and you got to give props to Derek Hamill, who's starting in last today. What a run this guy has had. Now you got to give him credit to go from... To go from last to top 10 in a race where there's only been one caution, I mean, that's 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 basically all driver. You got to give him a lot of credit to go from, that's a huge, that's a huge gain on the day when the odds are not necessarily in your favor to make that gain. Yeah, absolutely. Looking as well throughout the field, there's Barreto and Turner, they're going after it. That is for seventh on track. Jesse Turner, I think, right now would be inside the top 30. We know Johnson is out. Collins is out. If we see where Johnny Garner is currently running, he's back in 30th. You know what? I, I wouldn't be surprised if Johnny Garner would be out as well. Oh, Cody Smart blew up! Oh, not again. Not again. This could change everything once again, but he's letting the traffic go by. Oh, oh this no. could be a yellow. Oh, no. Garner goes by, he stops on the track. Does the yellow come out? Uh -oh. There it is! No, no, Yellow's no. out! Yellow's out! Look at the ambulance lights! They are out and this changes everything! That is not what Colin Denton wanted to see. The six second gap is now evaporated. Colin Denton sitting there... He has to be, he's kicking his rocks like Dustin Davis and Brett Steere were last Sunday night because Dustin Davis, just like Brett, Colin Denton here, was probably going to win, romp to that victory. And then Christopher Alphaby, in this case, the 10 car of Cody Smart, somebody stops on track and that just changed the entire complexion of this race. Man. That changes everything. Colin Denton, the race leader. And remember as well, this is going to be a single file restart with under 10 laps to go in the race. So this could be a battle between Colin Denton and Jonathan Logan. Neil Clifford would have to fight for it. Brian Ferris even more because of Edwin Mendez in front of him. This changes everything. We're just going to go from the aerial shot and show you Cody Smart. After bringing out the second caution in Nashville. So then we'll go from the aerial shot. Just blew up. Same place where Johnson blew up as well. We'll show you, we'll you CJ Williams is on board. Look at all these drivers going by. At least no issues, but this is where everything changes. Garner gets by as well. Now, if we can go from the pit lane one. Nope, we can't go from there. Um, let's show you an onboard. If we can go from, I'm trying to figure out what would be the best. Let's just go CJ Williams and then we'll show you 
where the yellow flag comes out. It's still green there at the moment, so... Let's rewind the footage. From CJ Williams, currently in 23rd. There's Cody Smart, just about to blow up right now. Now wait for the yellow to come out. See it, don't see it, don't see it, don't see it. Still green, it's still green. Still green. Right there, right there. Let's rewind it again. Right there. One frame back. That's where the yellow flag comes out. So now where's the race leader Colin Denton? So the top 12 crossed the line before the yellow flag came out. But the Colin Denton, you know he's going to be furious at Cody Smart. Probably may have flipped the bird out the window to him. Saying, what the hell, dude? Come on. But let's get ready for the restart once again in Nashville. Seven laps to go in Nashville. Yellow flag is out after Cody Smart blew up. Colin Denton had a six-second lead. Go down the drain. Was about to go to victory. But he's got one more restart to deal with, at least, for right now. We could have an immediate yellow and have a one-lap shootout. He's the leader. Jonathan Logan, second. Andrews, a lap down. Neil Clifford, third. Edwin Mendez, two laps down. Brian Ferris, fourth. Zach Ryan, fifth. Carter Friesen, sixth. Jesse Turner, seventh. Igor Barreto, eighth. Tyler Marco, ninth. Eric Monaco is sad. This is crunch time now. This is the, This could be the money restart here in the Music City. Who's it gonna be? Let's find out. We go back up through the gears right now. Green flag is back out. And Denton got a good jump. Gained about a car length and a half there over the 21. But let's see what happens. Logan's got to deal with Andrews. Could this be what the 34 needs? I think... Uh, I think. Oh, he's trying! He got a draft! He's looking inside! Jonathan Logan trying to take the lead away from Colin Denton. Not working out yet. Coming to the line. It's going to be six to go. Denton late on the brakes and one. Can he keep the lead off of two? Not just yet. Logan still on the quarter panel. Oh, he clears him there. Clear down. He's got to cut down right here. He does. Colin Denton surviving for right now, but he's got a trunk full of Jonathan Logan in the high point forward. Five to go. A yellow will end it. Here he goes. The 21 to the inside. Logan can't get it to work. Denton playing defense. He keeps the lead. See what he does in three. Meanwhile, Clifford and Ferris, they're duking at it for third spot. That's going to allow these two to separate. He's got, if you're Jonathan Logan, you saw Brandon Nelson. He sized up Equan Hazem on that late race restart here Sunday night. And he was able to time it. Now, you have to be careful here because if you make a mistake, like we already said, you ain't get, you're not getting back to his rear bumper if you make a mistake. So even if you have to sit here till lap 92, 93, Better to sit there, size up that exact move that you need to make than to make the wrong move here. And he's got to deal with John Andrews as well. That's not what that 21 wants one bet. Meanwhile, Ferris gets by Clifford for third. Here comes Friesen for fourth spot. Three laps to go in Nashville, and the gap has gone up. Half second lead for Colin Denton. Trying to win for the first time since the Charlotte Robo last season and get in the playoffs. We'll figure everything out after on who's in and who's out after this checkered flag comes out. Here comes Ferris in that 20 on the outside, getting by Andrews. This could be a three-man dash for the win. Popsicles are up, two to go. I don't think that 21's got enough, like we've been saying all race. His car was never good out in the air behind people. He needed that clean air to have a fast race car, and I just don't think, I think he's probably at this point, I think he's run out of time. 
unless that 34 car slips up, which obviously is possible, but it's going to be one lap to go here at Nashville. 1.3 miles remain. Colin Denton has dominated most of the race today after the first yellow flag came out. Had a six-second lead until Cody Smart blew up with about 15 laps to go. Had to hold off Jonathan Logan on a challenging restart, and he has pulled it off, and he's coming off of the final turns. Win number one of the season to the 34A and W Ford, Colin Denton wins the Gibson Guitars 500 in Nashville. Great race today. Jonathan Logan second, Brian Ferris third, Neil Clifford fourth, Carter Friesen fifth. Clifford, he's definitely right now above the top 30. Let's see where everyone else is. Jesse Turner is 11th. That should be good for him to be above the top 30. We don't know about Mitchell Collins yet because the wins are the higher priority at the moment. Nathan Stapleton, 21st. He should be okay. And Johnny Garner, 29th. Oh, I don't know. That's going to be close. Whether he's in or out. If he's out, Collins would have spot 16 still. But what a race. Yellow lights come back on, signaling the end of today. And Colin Denton got the job done. How about that? He, unlike, unlike what we saw some guys Sunday not able to do, he was able to, he did close the deal. He was able to ride that one home there and get the first or second. First win of the season for the 34 first. team. Said his teammate got walloped out of that race on that tough incident there with the 12 car, but he was able to come through and where one car couldn't, he was able to carry through home and score that victory there for that team today. So a definitely a big win for that team. Marty Johnson, I can guarantee you this. He's currently outside of the top 30 at the moment. All right, let's figure everything out and dissect it. Here are the playoffs after round 20. So you take a look at how the standings look. Johnny Garner, just enough room to be in still by 20 points over Marty Johnson. Colin Denton with his win currently means Mitchell Collins is outside of the top 16. And you hate to see that happen. So right now, with 16 drivers in because of win wins only... The first man that would currently be out would be Jesse Turner in that 43. Last guy of the one wins that are inside of the top 30. The playoffs just got a lot more crazier now, Matt. Yeah, be, uh, it'll be interesting. We go to what, Eldora next week? Oh, yeah, Eldora next week. And remember as well, the top 30 drivers in points. Well... I shouldn't really say the top 30 drivers in points because uh, this is a special race. So we're going to do some heat races, some LCQs as well. Um, and that will all be determined, by the way, via um, driver points. How we'll determine the heat lineups. Uh, only 30 drivers, if I recall correctly, will get in. So if you And if you do miss a race, uh, don't worry. You will uh, still have a playoff berth regardless. Um... So yeah, there won't be any part-timers though. I don't think that will enter in the race at the moment. So Igor Barreto won't be entered, but he could still be considered eligible for now. Nah, you know what? Barreto will be in, actually. <clears throat> so only 37 drivers will be entered. All the other part-timers will not be in. So that's how that looks. You look at the battle in points. Diego Rossello has upped it to 74 over Zachary Fitzwater. But yeah, next week though, first ever Auto FSRL New Era Cup Series race on the dirt, the Eldora Speedway. That should not be disappointing. It should be a fun one. No, it should be. Definitely looking forward to being interested to see how these guys take on the dirt. Yeah, absolutely. So that is going to do it for today. On behalf of Matt Tuck, I am Mario Sakali. You've been watching the Auto FSRL New Era Cup Series. We congratulate Colin Denton on his first win of the season in the Gibson Guitars 500. Thank you all for joining us, and so long from the Music City.